relationships are such fundamental components to who we are as human beings. The idea that we don't need people and that we should be able to go at everything alone doesn't hold water from a biological perspective. Much of the brain's um, functions and structures are either directly or indirectly related to our ability to hold and form connections. Because from an evolutionary perspective as a species, we couldn't survive without other people. I mean, just think about how we're born, right? We're born unable to fend for ourselves. And so this is why attachment matters so much. We are born into a, a relationship with our primary caregivers, typically mother, father, et cetera, but it could be other anyone who is a primary caregiver. And those relationships are embedded in communities. And so this is how we survive as a species. And I think one of the things that's really interesting also from polyvagal theory perspective is that not only do we have structures in our brain, but structures connected to our brain that connect our body to our brain, particularly the vagus nerve, that actually are connected to our ability to connect to other people. When we are connected to others in a socially engaged way, we are in what's called ventral vagal state. That means that we feel safe, connected, um, at our best, we feel protected. Whenever we feel unsafe, our first instinct is to look to people around us to help us. If we don't get the help that we need, then we move over to sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight. And if then we still don't get, we're not able to escape or to fight off our, whatever we're feeling is you know, going to be um, impacting us or dangerous for us, then we move over to dorsal vagal freeze or collapse. Um, and so relationships are important. And I think this is why it's so especially bad whenever our ability to relate to others is, is hurt or compromised in some way. If our connection to others is so fundamentally key to us feeling safe and being at our best, but our ability to connect is compromised, that takes away a lot of our access to feel safe. And that is especially infuriating for me because it is so unfair that something that is our birthright is somehow compromised because people are either um, hostile or abusive or neglectful in some way or excessively neglectful or hostile. And so um, this is why for me, the point of my page and the name of my page, be the chief human resources officer of your life, I had to abbreviate it, right? Because the name had to be shortened. But it's the idea that you get to pick who is in your life because we have to protect our ability to connect so that we can have, it's like a pipe that connects us to the sources of life and energy and well-being. And if that's compromised, we don't have access to it to the same extent. And this is why though, to me, boundaries is so important. Boundaries protects that connection. It may mean, boundaries may mean we lose certain relationships, yes, but overall, we're able to protect our ability to connect with somebody else, with somebody who is actually good for us and safe for us. And when, we, when that has been damaged, um, especially as children, then we have to find ways other ways to connect to that same source of safety. And this is what I really love about being able to connect with animals, with pets, about being able to connect with authors or educators that we read about because we feel seen, about being able to connect with a source of faith, you know, a, a life force for us, God or whatever we believe in. Um, there's other ways to connect too. Some people connect very closely to plants. You know, I've actually started developing a connection with plants in a way that I hadn't before because I started gardening. And these plants, I love to go see them. They're like my babies. You know, I call them my green babies. So anything that helps us feel connected and not alone or less alone is going to be beneficial for us. You know, and so I think it's important for us to really know what the resources are that we have at our disposal because. If one of these sources, let's say that we have, you know, this is our life force and energy and we have these pipes that connect us and one of the pipes gets broken and we're not able to access connection the same way and we don't realize we have other portals through which we can connect, then we're left feeling very alone. 
So being able to look at our own resources and see what all is our, at our disposal can be super empowering. Um, and so because one of the major ways is relationships and connections to other people, it is, it, it's really difficult whenever we take a hit there. Because what ends up happening really is that the medicine people becomes the poison. And so the idea is how can we either bypass that through other portals or how can we, um, you know, bypass it enough so that we have enough access to this healing energy life force so that we're then able to heal that part and reaccess our connection to humans. And so I want you to feel empowered. There are more than one ways to do this and you have to see what works for you, but just you don't have to follow any one modality. This is why being connected to yourself and knowing what works for you and when you feel better is super important. Knowing this information cognitively is huge. I mean, this is my one of my rules I feel like here in this page is being able to offer this information. But the other component is you. You knowing what you feel. You knowing what makes you feel better. That is where blending and wetting those two together, both our cognitive ability to understand things, the top-down processing, the psychoeducation, with our own sense of felt safety and noticing what our resources are can be incredibly healing for us.